Well, hi folks, welcome back. Thanks for joining me. I really appreciate your time. Today I want to talk about a subject that is rather near and dear to my heart. A lot of you guys probably know or are aware that I'm a friction fire bug. I love doing the bow drill. You know, a lot of people jog or go do yoga or, you know, do karate or read a book to, you know, relax and unwind a little bit. I just happen to be an oddball and I really enjoy friction fire. So I wanted to talk about something that is not talked about a lot, but there's uh, some obvious biases out there towards it. Um, I want to talk about these things right here and one similar. This is just one example. This is just a block of, I think this is pecan, that I uh, epoxied a skateboard bearing block into to use as a bearing block when I'm practicing a lot. Um, it makes it uh, quite a bit easier. If you're using a traditional bearing block that's just made out of wood, um, you're going to have probably 30 to 50 percent more friction when you're working your bow as opposed to something like this. Well, do I think it's cheating? Honestly, it depends on how you're using it. In my opinion, if you make yourself or your skill set reliant on a block like this or something similar for, to uh, get success, then yes, I believe you're cheating yourself. If you're someone who practices all the time, who uses a wood, wood bearing block from time to time to you know, keep their skill set fresh in, in a natural type environment, then no, I don't think it is cheating. However, one thing that I really feel like is valid about these and what um, I guess you could go ahead and say helps me justify it a bit more is that there are many alternatives in nature for a friction-free bow drill experience almost. So that's what I wanted to talk about today. I wanted to throw out a couple examples to you guys, guys who are trying to learn how to do the bow drill, guys who practice all the time, just make you aware of some resources that are in nature that actually makes the bow drill easier. So let's get rearranged and I'll tell you about it. Let's sit here and smolders. Let's talk about this one. This first example is a chunk of fat wood I harvested about 10 feet to my left. One thing I love about fat wood is it's nice and hard. It's got resin impregnated in it, which keeps it from breaking down like a normal wood bearing block would. And one of the really nice things about this, guys, is because it's full of resin, it's self lubricating. I'd put this one right up there with using a, a skateboard bearing. Another really nice thing about these is that at least here in the southeast, they're here in abundance, pretty easy to find, whether as a stump in the ground or you know in a wide branch or something like that on a pine tree. Guys, if you have if you have this resource available, I highly suggest you check it out. We go for the other one. All right, guys. This is actually off the same kind of tree as that fat wood came from. This is just a knob of pine bark I pulled off of a knot of a dead pine tree. I'll superimpose a picture of a similar knot here. This one is not as friction-free as the fat wood, but it is really close. Um, now I will say, guys, these are a lot more temporary use than uh, the fat wood here is. The fat wood lasts a long, long time because, it, like I said before, it does kind of self-lubricate a little bit, so, you know, there, it doesn't wear away into the material itself nearly as fast as something like this. I've used this one once now today, and I'm, I could feel the heat coming through this side. I'm going to guess probably two or three more coals off of this thing, and it would be wore out. Um, one thing you do have to keep in mind about 
pine bark, it is fragile. So you can't really put a whole amount of pressure or a lot of pressure on it, or you run the risk of it splitting in half and you stabbing yourself with your, your bow drill spindle. Well, folks, I realize that these two examples today may be considered somewhat area specific, especially to me and others in the southeast here where fatwood and pine trees are, are plentiful. But I, let's talk about a couple examples that I know that I know that work fairly well through personal experience as well as talking to other uh, fellow friction fire bugs. One main example that I have used here that I'm not going to show you today just simply because I don't want to down a live tree at the moment. Uh, red and silver maple both work really well if you cut them down live. A piece about yay big, um, leave the bark on it so it kind of contains the sap on the inside and just use it as a bearing block of whatever size piece you, you find comfortable and use that. It's not as good as either of these but it is also a lot better than just regular. Apparently Chris Tannerson is plain. But anyway. But it does work a lot better than just a straight up piece of dried wood. Another good one that I'm aware of, a buddy of mine up north uses a black poplar bark, somewhat similar to this, at least in concept anyway. Um, the bark structure is a lot different. I can't show it to you because I don't have black poplar here. And guys, above anything else that you get from this video today, I highly suggest you just get out there and experiment with what resources you have available in your environment. Because there are many better options than just using a dried piece of wood that you have laying around from building your bow drill set as a bearing block. There are many nature made friction free or low friction alternatives well guys thanks for joining me today thanks for listening to me talk to you about something that i'm pretty passionate about guys if you found this video helpful or just enjoyed it would you go ahead and hit that like button for me it does help me out quite a bit if you want to see more videos about friction fire or just want to see what else i have coming down the pipeline on this youtube channel here go and hit that subscribe button as well and guys as always please hit up the comment section and just start a discussion ask questions uh, make comments. I enjoy the discussions that, that come from videos such as these and I just enjoy interacting with you guys and guys Thanks again for joining me. I'll see you next time You know some people run some people do yoga some people go swimming, you know to unrel to un unrelax to, so they can get stressed Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Jeez, dude <sighs>